Hello and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren and today I'm going to be looking at a tier zoo video. This is the crustacean tier list. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I feel like I enjoyed the last time I've watched a tier zoo video. A big, big shout out to our newest channel member, Jonathan H. Before we get going, very much appreciate you, sir. Um, if you do become a member, you can get some access to some early content, uh, sometimes extra content that I won't actually be able to post on YouTube proper. Um, definitely the the early stuff though uh and you know you get shout out some so all the little perks just little perks so thank you again to jonathan for joining our channel members um i'm and like i said i'm looking at this crustacean tier list today let us let's learn let's learn and also see if we agree <laughs> with the tier list here <laughs> Crustaceans are some of the most popular builds in the entire game. In fact, they're so popular that it's become sort of a meme that every player will ev See, this is the video, the Lindsay Nicole video. That's the one that I literally just saw it in reference in one of her other videos. I need to watch it if I haven't already. Eventually drop their current character and switch to being a crab main. But just how competitively viable are crustaceans really? Which unique abilities does the Crustacean class make use of that enabled them to become such a resilient force across Armor. so many of the game's expansions and balance patches? And are they actually an optimal build choice in the current meta? Or are they just an easy-to-pilot, low-skill floor character? We'll discuss all this and more as we rank the most notable builds on the Crustacean tier list. This video was okay. sponsored by GiveWell. Before we get into the tier list, let's first discuss all the right. Crustacean faction's general game strategy and the key abilities they use to accomplish it. Crustaceans are part of the large- Gotta love a Ken reference, a Barbie and Ken reference there. My job is beach! I'm a crab. ...larger faction of arthropods, and so crustaceans inherit all the main perks of the arthropod class. Oh, cool. The most important one, of course, is their exoskeletal armor, which provides a huge defense boost. Given that most crustaceans have to contend with some of the most dangerous builds in the game, this extra protection is crucial to their viability. Their carapace, which is the thickest, sturdiest, and most important link in their armor, can block attacks from seabird beaks, fish jaws, and many of the other f- Ah, no, no, thank no, no, you, fish. Look at those. Oh, my. I don't like that fish. Threats common in aquatic environments. It does, however, have the same weakness as all exoskeleton-type builds, which is that their defense stat drops drastically for a short time when leveling up. If their armor mm. ever does fail them, this doesn't immediately mean game over. No. Well, that's horrifying. And I mean, I like crab, you know? I, I grew up in Baltimore. Uh, <laughs> I've been crabbing, and we ate the crabs we caught that day, you know? Like, I, I really do enjoy them when they're done well, but that would be a no thank you for me. Over. Crustaceans have the incredible ability to regenerate HP after taking damage, even being able to regrow entire limbs. So even something as devastating as losing a claw or a leg isn't something crustaceans can't recover from, and in fact can be the optimal play to distract an opponent and escape a fight. This ability makes crustaceans a very beginner-friendly build. I think, don't like some lizards do that too? Like they, uh, like if something gets them by the tail, they'll just wiggle away, you know, get off, like release it, you know, and then run. As you can make a lot of mistakes and still progress through your playthrough relatively unhindered. Crustaceans also have uniquely specialized limbs that come to two points rather than one. This makes it super straightforward to spec them into various different specialized opposable claws, which can be optimized for slicing, crushing, piercing, or grappling. I've said in the past Ugh. that I think crustaceans are a broadly no! tier class. That's huge! And I think this still holds up. Crustaceans have a lot of interesting tools at their disposal, but due to their middle-of-the-road stat spread, they are constantly fighting an uphill battle against the many high-tier threats they need to contend with, and have to play things perfectly to not get run over in these matchups. So, let's see how the individual crustacean builds fare and get into the tier list. Let's go. Starting us off in F tier, we have the Barnacle. <laughs> the Barnacle is a- Barnacles are a crustacean? 
Dude, I thought they were like a, G a big bacteria or something. Like, I, or a fungus or something like that. Crustacean build with an almost completely AFK strategy. As a barnacle larva, you find a spot and then attach to it and filter feed for the rest of your playthrough. Now, I'm not dunking on players who enjoy idle games. I'm a fan myself. However, this strategy does have some major flaws. Despite the fact that barnacles have the highest defense stat of any crustacean, the survivability of a barnacle is entirely contingent on their choice of parking space. Barnacles can attach to just about any surface, from ship holes to cement walls, to whales and even other crustaceans. Choosing a spot on a non-living surface leaves the barnacle vulnerable to predators. As high as their defense stat may be, there are plenty of builds that are willing to invest in anti-shell defense abilities, like the acidic attacks of the starfish or the Oof. drilling attacks yeah. of the whelk snail, neither of which are uncommon on the reefs and coastlines that barnacles call home. But if they opt for a living host, which is easier said than done by the way, then their survivability is completely tied to the survival of their host, a tenuous gambit in a metagame as hostile as the ocean server. Whales are a pretty safe choice, but opportunities to secure real estate on a whale are few and far between. That was a lot of barnacles. Much more likely you'll need to settle for property on the shell of another crustacean, which, as we'll see later on this list, is quite a gamble. Personally, I'd say if you want to play a mostly AFK marine build, opt for the scallop, as you'll still get to chill and filter feed most of the time, but can still escape if need be. Run away! Also in F tier, we have the shrimp. Now, shrimp are a super diverse group with a ton of interesting strategies, but in general, shrimp make very poor use of the crustacean build's unique abilities. Broadly speaking, shrimp have weak legs, no eye stalks, and small claws. No eye stalks might seem trivial, but I- They tasty though, if you do not overcook them. It's so easy to overcook shrimp. Eye stalks are actually a pretty useful ability, allowing oh, cool. them to take cover in the sand or under the seabed while still remaining vigilant. Shrimp rely heavily on that same strategy, but because they cannot surveil their surroundings while hiding, a clever predator can easily just wait until they resurface and pick them off. Attacking a shrimp is also a lot less risky than attacking most crustaceans, as their damage dealing abilities are far worse than the rest of the faction. The shrimp's scaled down appendages are a trade off meant to buff its mobility. Shrimps have specced into shorter, flatter legs that increase their aquatic movement speed in a way somewhat reminiscent of a fish's pelvic fins. This is a neat idea that means shrimp can freely swim rather than walking along the ocean floor. But in practice, this kind of just meant that shrimp ended up as the seahorses of the crustacean faction. A tankier but slower moving swimmer that can't adequately defend itself or evade attacks, so it gets bullied by every other nearby player. Shrimp do have one escapability, in that they can very quickly dash backwards. But this is of oh. course very predictable and exploitable yeah. by experienced players. Yeah, you just go... <laughs> You freak them out and then you go behind them. Now, it's important to note that while they may not have the best stats, crafty shrimp mains have been able to reach some level of viability in the meta, either by specking into debuff cleansing abilities and playing as a- Like Jacques from uh, Finding Nemo. Okay. Debuff cleansing abilities. Predator support class, or by abusing a quirk of the game engine, which allows them to fire off powerful short range sonic projectiles called cavitation bubbles that can stun other players. These are both respectable strategies that merit higher tier placement, but as a whole, shrimp are stuck in the bottom tier. There. First in D tier, we've got the isopod. Other than the barnacle, which literally cannot move, the isopod has the highest base defense stat of any crustacean on this list. Its shell is perfect for deflecting attacks, and when they curl into a ball like an armadillo, there are very few predators yes. that can threaten them, unless they're several orders of magnitude larger outright. However, the isopod has essentially no damage dealing abilities whatsoever. No. It has no attacks, no poison, nothing to threaten aggressive players with. And so against a persistent attacker, it will essentially always lose. Isopods are a diverse and widely distributed group. I keep forgetting that, like, the little roly-poly... Like, I, forget, I forgot that they were crustaceans. Like, I was, like... I just often... Like, I mean, I guess a lot of crustaceans kind of are, like, the bugs of the sea. But I always forget that. <laughs> With both terrestrial and aquatic variants. The terrestrial variants, known as wood lice, pill bugs, and roly-polies, function very similarly to miniature cockroaches, using their flat shape to wedge themselves into hard-to-reach positions, and only leaving the safety of these places in order to scavenge for loot. The larger aquatic variants of the isopod are usually similar in their strategy, 
but can also opt for a parasitic playstyle, where they actually fuse with a fish player, destroying and replacing the fish's tongue. This parasitic oh no. strategy is great for farming XP and is super AFK, but does come with pretty much all the same risks I mentioned about the barnacle. If the fish gets attacked and defeated, the isopod usually goes down with the ship. Technically, if given the chance, they could detach and escape, but in the marine meta, oh. chances like that are quite rare, and without a host, they're likely to just get picked off anyway. Not the worst crustacean, but it's leaving a lot on the table <laughs> not making use of the crustacean's highly customizable forelimbs. Next in D tier, we crayfish. have the crayfish, also known as the crawdad. This is a okay. smaller- Okay, so I like, I mixed those two, because I feel like, I thought it was crawfish. Uh, crawdad. Okay. All right, I guess they're the same, but maybe different? variant of the lobster subclass, which mainly sticks to freshwater servers. This means that unlike the lobster, which needs to be prepared to contend with the likes of sharks, octopus, eels, and the multitude of dangerous threats you'd find in the ocean servers, the worst things a crayfish might run into would probably be something like a turtle or largemouth bass. And yet, even in this much less punishing environment, crayfish still underperform. They have solid matchups against frogs, which is true of essentially every other build in existence as well, and they can frogs. sometimes hold just like, let's just dunk on frogs. Their own against freshwater fish due to their armor, but pretty much anything beyond that and they begin to struggle. They don't have claws that are anywhere near as powerful as some of the other crustaceans on this list. And so when confronted with an adversary, they often lose if they can't escape. Their only real advantage is that their smaller size opens up a lot of additional options to where they can run for cover and hide, as they can fit into very small openings between rocks and debris on a riverbed. I've never actually had crawfish or whatever. Like, I was in New Orleans pretty recently, but it was, it's, they're not in season right now, so we didn't actually get to try them. We had some really good charbroiled oysters, but like, I, if you've tried crawfish, let me know. I want to know what they taste like. However, because they often aggregate so close to the shoreline, they're vulnerable to being picked off by birds, whose pinpoint precision strikes can hit them even in partial cover. Without oh, wow. proper offensive capabilities, they'll always find themselves outclassed by their more powerful relative. A build which I think we've name-dropped enough times already to just go ahead and move on to. Lobster. First in C tier, we have the Lobster. Lobsters are a solid marine tier build with lots of strengths, the most obvious of which is their incredibly large and powerful claws, which grant the lobster one of the highest grip strengths in the entire game, able to easily crush through the defenses of just about any other player. And That's kind of fun that people, like, of course humans do that. Like, it's like, look at this lobster, let's see what it can crush, and then just, like, keeps, let's just play. <laughs> like, they don't know they're playing, but, like, of course we do that. <laughs> inflict devastating damage in the process. <gasps> this is excellent for defense and also for taking control of an objective or point of interest on the seafloor. Similar to shrimp, lobsters also have fairly decent mobility, although the only direction they can move quickly is directly backwards. This is all quite solid, however, the lobster does have its own share of weaknesses in addition to the standard crustacean weaknesses. This backward mobility is fairly limiting, and means that attacking a lobster from behind often leaves them with very little counterplay options. Oh yeah. As their claws cannot reach backwards, and if they try to use their burst mobility option, their only choice will be to move directly towards you, unless they slowly reposition themselves so that their back faces away from the threat. Oh, yeah, that's now, rough. this is in contrast to the next build on our list, which I think is a bit more versatile in its mobility. Crab! Next in C tier, we finally arrive at the Crab build. The poster child for the Crustacean class, and one of the most reliable and consistent mid-tiers in the entire game. Crab claws are extremely customizable, able to be optimized for whatever best suits the current meta. Some spec into smaller, more precise claws that enable to capture small prey more easily. Some spec into sharp-edged claws used for slashing at soft-bodied opponents, such as cephalopods. And some opt for pointed claws, perfect for jabbing at pesky fish who can't mind their business. However, the thing Get that really out. sets crabs apart from other crustaceans is that they've opted not to spec into the pleon trait. The pleon is the rear abdomen seen on most other crustaceans huh? we've discussed so far. It's the tail part which allows shrimp and lobsters to use that special burst mobility option. The trade-off, though, is that the pleon vastly increases their hurt box and functions as a weak point. In order to have the flexibility required to give them that quick movement, it can't be as heavily armored as the rest of them. 
So while crayfish, shrimp, and lobsters fold pretty quickly when being attacked from behind, crabs can usually just shrug it off. However, yeah, they're like, get, get off, stop bugging me. Just because they can't dash backward instantly like other crustaceans can. Their crabs are quick though. If you've ever like seen one on the, on the ocean or like on, on the beach or something, they can move. Doesn't mean crabs are immobile. Instead, <sighs> crabs focus on lateral mobility which turns out is often much more useful for dodging attacks. They can quickly swim or dash to the left or right when needed. And although this might not be as impressive as the lobster's dash, it's still often enough to save their life anyway. Now I don't want to give you the impression that I think crabs are at all overpowered. They still get bodied plenty, especially by builds that spec into high intelligence. But the strategy that goes into optimizing your character's hurt box is not something I think we should overlook, as that actually is a pretty high level play. Like you get like we we've been crabbing before. It's like you need a like a bucket. <laughs> like you just take a bucket. Like a, a fabric is good because like or because then you can just um it just kind of collapses and just sits on the on the floor. Just like wait, and then every so often you raise it up and see if a crab has wandered in. And if it has, then now you have a crab, and then you put it back, and you get more. First, in B tier, we have the- Hermit crabs are better than regular crabs? Okay. I was not expecting that. Like, because I was like, you can get the hermit- Like, the hermit crabs you buy at the beach or whatever are just super, like, common and popular. Hermit crab. Now, unlike basic crabs, hermit crabs do have a pleon, which they need to protect by scavenging and equipping the shell of a defeated snail player. Technically, this means they aren't true crabs. But what really matters oh, okay. is that this ability is busted. It allows them to match the defense stat of the barnacle while retaining their ability to move. And on Ooh. top of all that, the shells okay. themselves can be augmented with extra perks, courtesy of sea anemone players. And using this combo, hermit crabs can add a toxic sting to their defense too. I won't spend That's too much cool. time on hermit crabs because I've already got a full video about them. But just understand that they've turned the main weakness of the false crab crustaceans into a major strength. The largest variant of the hermit crab, the coconut crab, can actually reach Hello. such giant sizes that it surpasses the need for a protective shell, since there's essentially nothing that's able to threaten it. And by oh dropping the God. heavy shell, they gain the ability to climb, which can allow them to even turn the tables on bird mains, which normally what? have an oppressive matchup against crustaceans. Wow. Next in B tier, we have the copepod. Now, this may seem like a weird inclusion on this tier list, as I usually don't it looks like how <laughs> discuss builds from the microbe weight class but cope pods really do deserve a mention as they pretty much have the entire zooplankton metagame on lock they're one of the most numerous builds in the entire game and can survive almost anywhere due to a multitude of elemental resistances they're almost like water bears tardigrade hi tardigrade i love tardigrades <laughs> in a way except in addition to being quite durable they're also easily the most mobile of all plankton builds. Oh, Most okay. other zooplankton only start out in that weight class, using their microscopic size to avoid detection from larger predators. However, as they level up, they increase in size and phase out of the planktonic metagame entirely. However, while in their planktonic stage, they're usually not super competitive, as they've spent all of their evolution points on abilities that they only unlock later on. Copepons, on the other hand, are fully optimized to max out their viability against other zooplankton, and thus completely dominate the meta in that space. They're not completely invincible, of course, and do often get taken down by colonial microbes, such as the Portuguese Man of War and its relatives. But among free-roaming zooplankton, copepods reign pretty much uncontested in their niche. This is especially problematic for human mains because copepods also ally with Vibrio bacteria to gain the bioluminescence ability, but can also transmit the deadly disease cholera. Whoa, what? There is a freaking crustacean, a microscopic crustacean, mind you, that can transmit cholera. Yeah, oh god, okay, well that new fear unlocked. And at the top of our list, in A tier, we have the mantis shrimp. Hi, the mantis shrimp. shrimp is famously one of the most stacked builds the game has ever seen, at least when it comes to offense. Instead of the standard crustacean grappling claws, mantis shrimp opt for either raptorial blades or bludgeoning clubs, which they can swing with truly unparalleled strength. 
These attacks deal Jesus. devastating damage to any player unlucky enough to be caught on the receiving end. And in many cases, these attacks result in a one-hit kill. Now, and like this is the, they're, they're the ones that the shrimp colors meme comes from, right? The Mantis Shrimp has a lot of hype and attention surrounding it, with a lot of players decrying the Mantis Shrimp as OP and broken and so on. The hype around its power stat is absolutely deserved. However, we can't forget that this build has a body plan roughly similar to the build that I've rated second lowest on this tier list. Their large, less heavily armored Pleon sticks out quite far from their carapace, which can leave them vulnerable to ambush attacks just like a regular shrimp or lobster, which is not an uncommon occurrence given their lack of camouflage. In addition, their small fins and small legs don't exactly translate to a high mobility stat, which is why despite mm. the fact that they're packing incredible heat, mantis shrimp usually only hunt the absolute slowest of prey, clams, scallops, and snails. This isn't a bad thing at all. In fact, I think the existence of a proper tank buster build is healthy for the overall metagame. But I do think the power of the Mantis Rip gets exaggerated a lot on forums and discussion boards. Abilities like being able to see color and polarize light in a unique way, or the bonus sonic damage effect their punches create, these are fun little quirks, but I don't think they significantly affect the Mantis Shrimp's place on the tier list. Okay. Give them running legs and the ability to breathe on dry land and- the frickin' Sonic. <laughs> and we'd probably need to start discussing a band though. Overall, yeah, I think crustaceans are in a solid spot in the current meta. Not overpowered, but not to be underestimated either. Crustaceans and insects are closely related, and are the most successful factions within the arthropod class. So it's only natural that they'd constantly be compared against each other. Insects are far more dominant on land, whereas crustaceans reign supreme in the water. Though they're similar in many ways, insects have a lot of unique abilities that crustaceans do not, such as venom, eusociality, and most importantly, flight. Meanwhile, most of the important abilities we see in crustaceans are also found in the insect faction. Sturdy defensive armor, the ability to equip shells of defeated tanks, quick burst mobility, regenerating limbs, these are all things insects can do too. I will give credit where- I didn't think that this was going to turn into an insects v crustaceans list, but I'm not mad about it. It's interesting. It's like, that's why I like videos like this though, because it makes me think about things that I- would usually never spend time thinking about. Where it's due though, crustaceans do have an edge when it comes to that regen perk I mentioned. Insects can regenerate every time they molt, but insects actually stop molting once they reach their level cap and can no longer regenerate after that. This coincides with insects getting their wings, which is kind of paradoxical because it means their most fragile feature is also the only feature they can never regenerate. Crustaceans, by contrast, continue to molt and regenerate even after reaching their full potential, reinforcing the idea that crustaceans are a more beginner-friendly build. And also, like, isn't that where things like there are certain crustaceans people say like they could technically live like oysters or like, not oysters, but like there are certain like creatures like that that people are like, well, Technically, they could live forever, ass assuming nothing kills them, because they can just keep regenerating. Is that a thing, or did I make that up? I might have made that up. Crustaceans are arthropods, one of the most diverse factions in the game. And while many are important parts... I think oysters, people say, could p potentially live forever if, like, no one kills them. Just in their little... Because they can also... And they can also change sexes. Whenever they and so like like clownfish, clownfish I think can also change sexes whenever they want to, um, whenever it's necessary. You know what? I'm gonna leave the the science and animal facts to the uh the experts, and I'm gonna stop saying things because I have been so wrong so many times before. Parts of their ecosystems, many others, including the copepods mentioned in this video, can carry diseases. These diseases can devastate communities that don't have the infrastructure to prevent them. And unfortunately, these same communities are often the ones least equipped to fight off these same diseases. It's the season of giving, and if you're anything like me, you want to help but worry that your donations could go much further and do a lot more good if used in the most efficient way. This is where today's sponsor, GiveWell, comes in. GiveWell was founded to help donors with that exact dilemma. They pour over independent studies and charity. All right, so we do not, we are not sponsored by GiveWell, but if you would like to do this GiveWell, the link for this video is going to be in the description box below, and you can always head over there in order to, uh, to see what they're about. Use, this is where you go, but use the link in Tier Zoo's description. And enter Tier Zoo at checkout.
make sure they know that you heard about GiveWell from Tearzoo to get your donation matched. Again, that's GiveWell.org to donate or find out more. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. All right. Okay, great. So thank you very much for watching. Ooh, the most terrifying cults to ever exist. Lots of video I might look at soon. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I like learning about, again, these, like, again, animals that I just usually wouldn't think of. I think it's always interesting when creators give, um, like, certain types of creature a fair shake that doesn't usually receive said fair shake. So... I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did. Let me know what else I should look at uh, in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. And once again, thanks to our channel members. Um, and I will see all of y'all in the next video.